So what I'm going to present today is both a combination and opposite of the last two presentations. It's the story of an online community that predates most of uh, what you know, long before social media was invented. It's a community that was started in 1996. And that's why you have this image here. It's an image of old times, long before the network effects existed. This image that you see here is of a maroon uh, sailor, which is exactly what people suffering from rare diseases felt before the internet happened. Now that the internet exists, it's not much more different. If you're diagnosed with a rare disease, that's exactly how you feel. Alone, lost in the desert, and the difference is that, unlike the marines and the sailor, people today have the ability to find people that have the same condition. So, if you have breast cancer, I suppose this represents about the community of people that would be treated at UCSF or Stanford University for breast cancer. If you have leomyosarcoma, that's how it felt in 96. And the dots that you see are not from uh, San Francisco. They are the number of cases that were known at the time in the world. If you would go to PubMed, you would see that there were 100 known cases in the world. Uh, PubMed was wrong, but we discovered this fairly fast. So I, let's take the situation. In 96, we created this community at the beginning with two patients. Uh, who both came and were amazed that they found one other person with the same disease. Uh, both came from cities that were with a population of over half a million people, and their doctors said they had never seen another patient with that disease. So we started with two, and then we had five, and the kind of communication that happened with five was pretty amazing for them. But then you had just two more, and here is the kind of connection that you can get. And those seven people together helped realize that, really, if you want to survive cancer, a rare cancer, it is a team effort. The seven people that are in this community are going to help you find what are the uh, potential treatment and help you decide which one you should go with. Just like people who climb mountains and need the, uh, the support and the work as a team, otherwise you know what's going to happen to you. What uh, happened is that the community grew much faster than we expected, and within two, three years, we had 700 people. We knew that what was published in public didn't make any sense. But even with 700 people, it was pretty clear that there was no science associated with the disease, and that finding a new discovery is really like the proverbial needle in a haystack. Very hard to do. Uh, in 2001, a software engineer joined the community and figured out that uh, he was probably not going to make it, but he wanted to help the next generation of patients suffering from that disease and that something needed to be done to help build the knowledge and the science behind, uh, related to the disease. So he used PubMed to find the young pathologist that published the most about this rare disease. Um, long before anybody was talking about Web 2.0, this man found a really great way of finding information that was so hard to find. It turned out that the uh, pathologist was a young pathologist at Stanford University. They connected, and the pathologist said, uh, if you want to build science, we need, you all need to do something. You need to help build a centralized tissue bank. So this community of people, uh, 700, decided to do something. They all connected. They, a couple of people with l some legal background helped create legal documents that could be used to be sent to all the, uh, the hospitals, the pathology departments across the globe where you had one sample of uh, that rare disease. And within 18 months, they had collected something just truly amazing, 300 samples, over 300 samples that were sent to this lab at Stanford. So what can happen when things like this get done? All of a sudden, you have this centralized tissue bank, and miracles can happen. So what was done was the samples are all paraffin block, and those paraffin blocks were sent 
and Matt Vanderin here created microarrays. And even though he received two to three paraffin blocks for, from each patient, looks like really very little. Uh, the way this technology works is really quite amazing. So they take uh, core samples from within the tumor, and then they put it into this microarray that you see there, and then they slice the microarray. And from this really scarce resource, they create an unlimited supply. It has another advantage. Uh, leomyosarcoma is known to be an extremely complex disease, and within a tumor, you have multiple variations, huge heterogeneity of, uh, within the tumors. So they did all this work. They ended up having lots of data. And they were faced with a really complex problem, the two faces of a tumor-associated macrophage. Macrophages are supposed to be there to eat bad cells, tumors. Uh, but some work at Stanford in the lab of Irv Weissman had shown that uh, for at least two types of tumors, the tumors that succeeded in reverting the role of the macrophage and transform them into uh, help, something that helps tumor grow. What Matt found is that there was a subset uh, within the samples that he had that uh, had very high concentration of those macrophages. And it, because it has been found, the, uh, the reverse use has been found in two types of tumors, doesn't mean that this is going to be the case with leomyosarcoma. So he was faced with this huge amount of data, and he couldn't figure out what role the macrophages had, because when they collected samples, they did not collect the stories of the patients. So they had to go back and for about two years interview uh, either the survivors or the family of the survivors with a whole set of questions to figure out what was the story of the patient for each one of the patients and what their outcomes were. And it turns out that uh, science was advancing pretty fast and Irv Weissman was discovering that there were two things that, was, that were happening with those macrophages, intra-tumor uh, macrophages. One is this CFS one that helps activate the macrophage and increase angiogenesis. Tumors cannot grow if they don't have vascular uh, environment where they can derive the, uh, the food that they need to grow. They also found that there was this ligand called CD47 that gives the instruction to the macrophage to not eat the, the tumor cell. And those two things together provide uh, the result that the tumor progresses really fast. So they developed a monoclonal antibody for the CD47. And by doing so, suddenly the, uh, the macrophage does not have this information that you should not eat the tumor and reverse to its normal role. Uh, that's exactly what happened with the leomyosarcoma tumors. And we have now learned a bit more. Uh, so here is a sample of what they did uh, first with Petri dishes and then with mouse. What you see there is at the top, the, uh, the green cells are leomyosarcoma cells. The reds are macrophages. And then uh, the bottom part, you don't have, uh, it's the same environment without the antibody. And as you can see, uh, many more leomyosarcoma cells are there. Uh, I wanted to show because showing really helps. Here are the cells and the macrophages. And right at the center, like close to the center, there is one that you're going to see. Here is what happens when you add a macro, uh, the monoclonal antibody. I don't know if you saw, the macrophage just went and ate a cell. The result is that uh, 10 years later, her Weissman published something uh, where the, it's pretty clear that uh, 
those CD47s are now present in every uh, type of cancer that is known, and it's going to open a way to do vaccination. More importantly, next year will be the first clinical trial on humans. And without the work of this tiny community, this work would have been delayed by many years. And just to say, you should support patient-driven research, because if it's not patient-driven, it's not going to work quite as fast and quite as well. Thank you.